The pissing contest of sprint coaches is the four by one relay. Anybody, the worst coach in the world could get a phenom to come out for their team and be really, you know, he's fast. But that team will probably not have a great four by one because that guy doesn't know what he's doing. He hasn't developed four or five other guys that can go with that guy. So I really think that, you know, it's, it's not having one fast guy. It's, it's being consistently good in the four by one year after year. The first thing we talk about when we talk about how to coach the four by one, and this is important, if, if, if you don't understand what's going on here, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to troll you as a coach. This is, this is uh, NCAA Championships 2012 in Des Moines, um, and there are a lot of runners here. And they got to be inside, outside. I call it lane ownership. And, and if you're like, of course, I, I probably should show you some pictures of situations in high school girls track, I hate to say it, but uh, at, the girls in our state are not coached as well, where the incoming runner's coming in in the middle and the outgoing's out in the middle. And what happens is they get tangled up because it's crowded, especially the first handoff. So if you don't understand who's inside and who's outside, the curve's always inside and the straightaway is always outside. And it has to be like, it has, that's where you start. But as Bob Knight told me one time, you don't form habits by talking about them, you must practice it. And so we have something simply brilliant. We have a line, any line will work. And what we do here is we just stay on each side of the line. So we have inside, outside, this guy's a step behind, he tells him, go. You know, like, half speed, go. And we hand off. Now, we can also coach candlestick stop sign. You know, hand placement. Uh, we, can, we can talk about, you know, like, that's a good high hand there. On the next one, now we're outside, inside. And I would definitely say, get your hand up, Dylan, because he's like this. We, we, want, we want a really high hand. Now we can take it outside and we can put marks down. That adds a degree of difficulty. And we work at leaving at the right time. And we're going to talk about leaving here in a minute, and it's really going to be important. But going back to that candlestick stop sign thing, I mean, it's shocking how many kids will put their hand like a plate instead of a stop sign. We're, we're stop sign. That's the way we do it. And that's the way Jamaica does it, too. That's, to me, that's just beautiful. That's, that's what we're after. Inside, outside, candlestick, stop sign. Oh, and also with the drills that you do, you can work at the thing that we do not run in like the Statue of Liberty. You know, like, no, we're like this. When, when do you go candlestick? When you see the, see the stop sign. Then you push it in. That's the way one perfect handoff looks. High speed. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't do this slow. Now, we do the drills slow. And you can do those drills every day. You can do it after practice, before practice, whatever, because... We don't do it every day, but you could because there's no cost. You know, nobody's messing up their shins or anything. There's a cost to that. You can't do that 20 times a day. So this is the revolutionary part of my handoffs. What we did, 2016, we had the second best team in the state, four by one. And uh, we we're the number one seed in our heat at the prelims, and we had a guy leave a little bit early, disqualified. I've never seen a sadder group. I will never get over it. When, you know, once again, it's one thing when you mess up a handoff on a Tuesday night or something. It's a totally different thing if you're second best in the state with four guys who were not on that team the year before that you have nurtured into a possible state championship team. And... It keeps you awake at night, dreaming, you know, like, like we could win it. We could win it all. 
and then you don't even get to be in the race because you left early. And leaving early is a problem, especially in a state meet, especially the anchor leg. So what we decide to do is to define go. What does go mean? So does go mean the turn of the shoulders? Is that what, or what we decide is the go is going to mean getting your first foot down. And what should we call it? Called the bang step. Bang. All right, so he's between, you can't see the other shoe. He's between two shoes, two marks. And he's between, he's a little bit on the plus side of the middle. And then Marcellus is six inches away from having a perfect bang step, which is perfect. A perfect bang step is down or within a foot of being down. That's a perfect bang step. What the bang step has allowed us to do is never to leave early. It's almost impossible. We have not left early in seven years. And that, that's fatal. Leaving early is fatal. Leaving late is slow. Leaving early is fatal. If, if my guy would have been late in 2016, we would have been in the finals. But he was early, and we were DQ'd. Saddest thing ever. Um, our marks are 1721. Uh, we've now gone to five, actually. So I think, I think we're 1621 this year. And you say, well, that's not enough. Well, yeah, we were 25 before. But if, if go means you got one foot down, that matters. you're counting and because uh, we've had uh, I've had to teach that to the the runner that's putting the mark down ought to be the incoming runner right that's who's that's the actually actually it's the outgoing runner that's going to put the marks down according to the speed of the incoming runner, right what, what we do that's a good question how do we arrive at 1621 we we, we say our generic is 1621 and then if, if we must adjust, then we'll go 1722 or 1520. And what, what we say is toe-to-toe -to -toe outgoing runner. So, so when we say 16, that's toe-to-toe -to -toe outgoing runner. And he has a certain size foot. So, it, okay. so that, that's just, you, you, could, you could standardize it however you want. Yeah, but people could confuse it if, they, if, we didn't, if you didn't specify it like that. Yes. Yeah. And walk on the inside line. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah, the, if you're on the outside of the lane, you want the tennis balls on the inside. Now you'll see a video where it's on the outside. But, and if, if you're on the inside, you want, be just vision-wise. And also note that, that we start from an up position. I went to 2018 National Championships in Oregon, um, and every girl's team was three point looking under their armpit to the marks. I'm like, I, I just don't agree with that, but they're all doing it the same. And I, I think they're all wrong. And why, why is that wrong in my opinion? I don't think your vision is, I think your vision is so important. Going at the right time is, I don't know if there's anything more important. I realize that down you might start more efficiently but I think vision's more important. So why did you take it from four to five? Uh, just vision-wise, it's, it's easier to spot when that person's going to be inside those two. Four just seemed a little bit cramped. And how do you define inside? Uh, between the two. Like on the ground or as soon as they enter? Uh, it, it, they're going so fast that it's kind of an estimate. Okay. And, and by the way, to get the bank step down, you have to be rolling. Roll, 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 poof. You're kind of predicting getting that foot down. Now this was a state meet. The team ahead was the state champions the year before and set the state record the day before.
And that was fun. Now, this is, you know, like, we, we did have the tennis balls on the outside, should be on the inside. You know, it's, it's always a shit show. I mean, <laughs> right? You know? But, you know, I told this guy right here, he's a junior, I said, you're going to get your ass kicked. I mean, this guy right here is going to destroy you. And I talk like that because I want him to, to lose, yeah, to lose and still be in second. <laughs> And then I told Marcellus, I said, if you leave early, I will never speak to you again. <laughs> because I knew we would be behind. I knew that a competitive phenom is going to what? He's going to want to get out. Yeah. And he's the one that can run away that no one can catch, too. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So, he's between the two balls. He's late. Not too late. <laughs> Right? Well, I mean, like... Right. He didn't even roll. He just waited and waited. Oh, he... He, he, him. he wanted me to speak to him again. Yeah. But, but, you know, like... But that, that's... I mean, he left late. Thank God, right? Uh, we like to... If people ask what we do for warm-ups, you know, they're on their own. I take pictures at meets. Um, they do 10 speed drills and then they sprint a couple times and then they'll do one four by one exchange and if they're not on our four by one they'll get on the track and pretend like you're getting timed once or twice because you got to sprint before you sprint you don't jog two laps and then go run the four by one you got to sprint before you sprint and you're not sprinting if you're not wearing spikes you got to wear spikes so this is before a meet and one perfect handoff done that's it. Okay, so if you're just watching that like I used to do for like the first 35 years of my career, you don't know if that's a good handoff or not. It looked okay, I don't know. But one of the things we've learned by the bank step is you can verify whether or not it was okay. And by the way, the way you video incoming runner right side of your iPhone, outgoing runner, that way you'll see the outgoing runner too. Now, <laughs> we're cut off here, but he is, th that, that's the second mark. So he's inside the zone, anywhere inside the zone works. And he is a few, you know, eight inches away. Perfect. And a lot of times my guys will argue, say, coach, we need another one. No, you're perfect. And remember, the thing that never happens, nobody ever leaves early. He's a little late. It's okay. Same thing. You say, oh, well, I don't know. Well, let's look at it. He's between the two. That is all the way down. He's not early, but that's, that's the bang step. Once again, you don't know if it's good or not until you check the film. He's between the two marks. Bang stub, what, eight inches, nine inches? I don't know. It's good. 100%. And <clears throat> that's just, you know, it, it's something that anybody that does it is, is like, gosh, I can't believe we just eyeball it before and say, okay, look good. Um, you guys don't do four by two here, do you? Yeah. Four by two handoffs are hard because you're tired coming in. So we do funny stuff like this. We do like burpees, you know, to get tired without running. We added the four by eight and the four by two got shut down with in less than a minute. The four by two is a great race and it's the damn distance coaches that screw it up for everybody. They don't want it because they think that it's already too sprint heavy, you know. That was exactly what they said. They're exactly. <laughs> and they have their own freaking sport. They cross country, right? Their own sport. Um, and then the way we teach open handoffs, we do open indoors in the four by two. And we do open, we did open outdoors last year in July, or July, in April. We, you know, we did that. We're always fast indoors. Why not go? I, I, a friend of mine, Brendan Thompson, um, ran, he sent me a video of them running at Iowa a, 
122 four by two with open handoffs. I'm like, gosh, if you can run 122 with open, why are we ever closed? And, but we still went back to closed in May last year. But in the four by four and the four by two, if you're open, the big thing is to get out. You know, don't be stupid and have the, you've seen the kids that, that stand there and get run over by the train. I mean, like, and you have to, you know, don't to just talk about it, do it. But I love the, the high hand here. V up, we call it. V up. Kids, kids will actually do things like this. They will turn opposite way. Um, yeah, that's, there are just so many dumb things that can happen. I, I took a picture of a kid that was like 15 meters away and he was running like Statue of Liberty. You know, like, come on, don't do that. It's embarrassing. <laughs>